all. This is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So this particular topic, excess deaths, has a lot of uh, controversy out there. And for the right reasons, that is because there is actually a lot of data that is not fully understood. And a lot of reasons for deaths during this COVID time and many still not understood. And I think this topic will be continued to, to be worked on for months and years to come. And we will continue to look back with more data to understand more and process more. So I was under a lot of uh, pressure from Cool Beans to say, we need to talk about this topic as well. However, the data that I had been seeing previously was mostly from blogs and substacks where it was difficult to actually agree with some of the fantastical numbers I was seeing. So I finally decided that I'm going to dig into this by myself as well. And so the discussion today is the very first review of the data that I'm seeing. We will continue to dig deeper in the coming days. However, today is a primer for myself and for some of you as well. I'm sure that majority of you are aware of it. So let's start. These are our gifts for humanity. They're continuing. There are some references here. So this is drbean.com. There are about 900 lectures here, actually even more than that now. And the, there is a link in the description of this video that gives you access to all of them with one time fee of a very low price. And the cool beans here, they can probably vouch for how good or bad these lectures are. So this is one. Here are various um, references that I'm going to use. WHO, there is a Lancet study here, our world in data, economist, and then even, <coughs> excuse me, even CDC, uh, then Worldometer as well. So pretty standard databases. What we do not have here is VAERS. And what we do not have here is the folks who may have created projections from VAERS. I am actually all for looking at those after this one so that I can wrap my head around correctly before I become derailed by some incorrect projections. So more to come on that one. So before we look at the numbers, the first, the context, what is the excess death? So according to WHO, and that is the definition for everyone, according to WHO, for example, the excess deaths is the actual deaths that have occurred minus the expected or projected deaths that were supposed to, were going to happen, were projected to happen, were expected to happen in the light of previous years. And according to WHO, the whole COVID era, January 2020 to December 2021, December 2021, that does not include 2022, there were excess 14.9 million deaths. And WHO's assessment in the range is 13.3 million to 16.6 .6 million. I have actually downloaded their Excel sheet. So if you go to the WHO site, they have a place here to say, download the data files. So you can download them and look at them by yourself as well. Interesting data there. So this is one context. Then another very important context that is kind of something that we've been talking about, we've been hearing, we've been listening, we'll be reading. There are various groups of thoughts. And I actually appreciate that there are various groups, various people who are digging into various places and coming back with the data. The only thing which kind of is not very much aligned with my, my nature is to just put everything in one group and say, this is 
the actuality or this is the reality. Especially for the excess deaths, we actually do not have a clear understanding anywhere for what is the real number and what is the cause of that. However, there are groups and people who say that the excess deaths, so there are excess deaths, more deaths than reported. So there are there is a group of people who say that these are because of vaccines. Then there are another set of people who say it is because of COVID. And it is probably they, so both of these groups are, we know, are very less friendly to each other. So this group says it is because of vaccines. Anyone who has vaccine injuries, they go and attack them badly. And I think the reason for that is that when people were not getting vaccines, then those who got vaccines were attacking them as well. So there is a animosity, unfortunately, between the groups, which there should not be. We should respect and love each other, regardless of where we stand. And that would allow us to reach the truth better. But anyways, this is one group. This is another group. Then there are certain groups which may be mainstream organizations or healthcare authorities, which say, for example, it was because of COVID, all of it. You would notice that in the uh, mainstream organizations or healthcare authorities, you would not actually think, find any numbers coming from VAERS or even considering some percentage of deaths because of vaccines or vaccine side effects. There's nothing, zero. So that is also kind of interesting for me that there is a complete blind eye there. So the authorities usually are saying, hey, this is COVID or COVID-related stresses on the health healthcare system and on the society. So what are some examples? For example, other health conditions for which people are not able to get or were not able to get their um, management or treatment they stayed away from the hospitals, they did not go to their doctors as often, and the result is they deteriorated more. And because of that, some people died because of other than COVID diseases, but because they did not seek help. Then there can be deaths in specialized groups. For example, unfortunately, early on, healthcare professionals had more deaths because one, there were no vaccines. Secondly, there were not, not great protocols. Thirdly, it was just so unexpectedly moving so fast that before people realized what it can do, the virus, there were a lot of healthcare professionals dying. There are also at the same time, deaths that were averted, that were protected or saved, or people saved from the death. For example, if we are not driving as often and as much, then the motor vehicle accidents will be lesser. Or if we are not going to, the, to a job where there may be job-related injury possible, then maybe our risk reduces. So it is actually both ways. It works for increasing the risk, for example, healthcare professionals, and reducing the risk, for example, people staying at home and not driving or not being exposed to the work injuries. Now, this is interesting that, so we have Luffy here. Uh, Patty was saying that she is missing Luffy, so I'm going to quickly show you Luffy. So here is Luffy. Hey, Luffy, how are you? You want to say something? <laughs> Luffy is totally not happy. What do you think is going on, Luffy? You want to try? Okay, leave my mic alone. Okay, Luffy's claw is stuck in my mic. All right, Luffy, you can go.
Okay, so we had Luffy. <laughs> Patty, this was in your honor. You were missing him. So here, back to the talk. Now, according to WHO, 84% of the excess deaths occurred in Southeast Asia, Europe, and Americas. It is interesting that in the beginning, there were some presenters who were saying that, hey, we think Africa is going to have a huge tsunami of COVID and they would have the most damage. They are uh, impoverished as well. They have less resources too. And they would just be pummeled. And it turned out that Africa actually, for the most part, did fine. So here, Southeast Asia, Europe, Americas. 81% of the excess deaths, this is WHO, in the middle-income countries. And out of even those middle-income, upper middle-income was, I believe, about 28%, and the lower middle-income were the remaining. And 68% of the deaths, excess deaths, were in 10 countries only. So 68% of the deaths in 10 countries only. So let's see which 10 countries before we continue. Luffy's hair are on me and now I'm getting all. Uh, okay, so let's look at the 10 countries. This is actually data from Economist, and I would show you the Economist data separately as well. So Economist data here, although reported COVID-19 deaths between January 1, 2020 and December 31, 2021, so 2022 is excluded, total 5.94 million worldwide, we estimated that 18.2 million so instead of 5.9 or in, in, instead of 6 million, 18.2 million people died worldwide because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And I would discuss what are the possible causes. Again, in this discussion, I haven't been able to find a reasonable place to go see the vaccine-related injuries. So that is not included. And none of these um, sites that I'm using they don't even consider that. Okay, so look at this. At, at the country level, the highest numbers of cumulative excess deaths due to COVID-19 were estimated in India, 4.07 million, the USA, 1.13 million, Russia, 1.07 million, Mexico, 798,000, Brazil, 792,000, Indonesia, 736,000, and Pakistan, 664,000. So India at the top, but India's population is very large as well, 1.4 billion people. So India at the top, 4.707 million, and then US, 1.13 million. So these are the 10 countries. So again, the 68% of the excess deaths are in these 10 countries. Now, economists, and again, I have no idea what economists' leaning is, how good or bad they are, but what I'm seeing in that data is very interesting. So we'll look at that together. And you can um, tell me in the comments that how reliable or not reliable they are. This data point that they've created is actually awesome. The whole data set is present in GitHub, plus they have an AI engine on top of it to do the processing. So here is what they are saying, economists. They're saying the excess deaths reasons are, number one, deaths without testing positive. What does that mean? That means there are some countries, some places where the testing was not occurring. They didn't have enough test kits, so they did not do enough testing. Or the I remember in the initial days when there was such a huge load of uh, COVID, for example, in Pakistan, when I used to call my friends, they would say, we just don't have time enough to do the testing. We'll just call them COVID. So there is one reason of a set of deaths that are not attributed to COVID deaths, 
but still are because of COVID, they were just not tested. Then data delays. Some countries actually do not have the accurate reporting and then some countries have delays. Then excess deaths also include in these years, th these are all cause mortality, not just the COVID. That also includes mortality for other reasons. For example, as I mentioned before, people not going to the hospitals or to clinics to get their normal health checkup and follow-ups and degrading a little faster and then dying. And I'll show you all of these. Then is the R world in data. What do you think about this little uh, illustration I made to represent R world in data, the data? So R world in data has a formula which they are calling P score. And this is actually really, this is a percentage. It is a scaling of it. What that means is, imagine if there are expected deaths of 100 but actual deaths that occur were 150. So how much, what percentage more deaths occurred? So that is a formula that is used by WHO, that is used by CDC as well. However, our world in data kind of named it. They called it a P-score. So here, the <clears throat> Luffy's here. So P-score, reported deaths minus projected deaths divided by projected deaths. So really, a percentage of the reported deaths from the projected deaths multiplied with 100. So that is a P score. So with this context, the, the sum summary for the context is 10 countries have the 68% of excess deaths. Africa is actually not part of the excess deaths. Southeast Asia or India specifically has the largest excess deaths, then US, and then other countries. The reasons for excess deaths, in my opinion, will be COVID, then other impacts as we saw, and even vaccines need to be looked into that. But these data points that we'll discuss today have no mention of vaccines in them. So let's look at some of these data points. So we saw this one. Here, the global all-age rate of excess mortality due to the COVID-19 pandemic was 120.3 deaths per 100,000 of population. So hear this out. This is a very important point. They're saying that per 100,000 global, we were expecting an additional 120 deaths because of COVID or COVID-related impacts per 100,000. However, in actuality, they think that this was actually 300 deaths, exceeded 300 deaths per 100,000. So almost, almost uh, thrice, not exactly, 2.5 times more. So that is their estimate globally. Again, you would see that this estimate would vary, vary for various countries. And some countries, it would vary because these countries do not have the correct numbers. Some countries, it would vary because they are actually in trouble. Now, with this, let's go here to the economist. Sorry, our world in data. Our world in data is using economist here as well. And I'm going to just very quickly walk us through some of the data here. So again, let's first look at economist's projection. You saw... WHO's projection. WHO's projection was up till end of 2021, 14 million. Economist's projection. And let's see here. Economist's projection is about 25 or 26 million excess deaths. So this is their data in GitHub. And here, there are three lines over here. This is the upper range, the upper range and the lower range and the mean is all here. The upper bound is about 26 million. So this is the other view of the data. Unfortunately, the graph does not show this. This number over here is 20 million. This is 10 million. So every one box 
is I be I believe five million. So 10 million, 15 million, 20 million, 25 million. So that is where this upper range is. This is Economist. I want to look at the Economist data first. Then we'll go to our world in data as well. Our world in data is using Economist data. So here. The, these links are in the description. I think it is fascinating to look at this data. And I would actually request you that wherever, whichever country you are from, look at this for your own country. So, for example, if I go here to United States. I'm just going to do a search instead of. If you see here, if I hover my mouse over here, it says United States, September 27th to October 3rd, 2021. So one week. Deviation from expected deaths plus 33%. This is that P score or really scale, the percentage of excess deaths. Expected deaths during this week were 53,798 and total deaths were actually 71,359. So that is 33% more. So they have done this for every country. And you can look at that and see what kind of deaths they are looking at. Then, if you see here, let me read a few things which were interesting. One, they said, Unfortunately, the total number of fatalities caused by the pandemic may be even higher for several higher than reported for several reasons. For example, the official statistics in countries. So I went over these numbers, uh, these reasons before. Then if you come down here, this is the excess death since country's first 50 COVID deaths. So meaning almost really in the beginning of the uh, COVID and from there till now. For example, if you look at this top country here, Bulgaria. Time period, April 20th to July 3rd. It is written July 2nd, instead of 2nd, it's 3rd, 2022. COVID-19 deaths, 37,220. Excess deaths, 71,750. And these are all cause mortality, meaning COVID-19 deaths reported are 37,220. But the country has excess deaths of 71,750, these need to be attributed somewhere. These excess deaths are so excess that these are not some small margin of error deviations. These are 50% more or 100% more. And so these are large numbers. That means they need to be looked into to say what is the data that shows the reasons for these deaths. So if I go down here, let's say, once again, if I can find United States. So here, U.S., March 9th, 2020 to July 24th. I do not know what's wrong with their numbering for 2022. So U.S. reported 1.02 million deaths, unfortunately. However, according to projections, the the, the excess de deaths actually are 1.2 million. So there is a 10% or 20% increase. And the per 100,000 excess deaths are 357. Let me see. Let me just confirm. Excess deaths per 100,000 people, yes. So 357 excess deaths. And remember that globally, we were expecting 129 excess deaths per 100,000 people. And here, U.S., 357. And you can actually see other countries as well. Now, what is behind those deaths? What is the cause of that? Countries where the data is present in more clarity, these should, these countries should do this analysis of figuring out what was the reason. Instead of people going to VARES, trying to extrapolate from there, then coming back and saying, here is what we think happened, and then uh, authorities just dismissing them, calling them fringe or calling them misinformation, 
it is the CDCs and FDAs, for example, in the US. It is their job. And I'll show you CDC's data here. So just to give you a quick look at it, this is CDC's model here as well. I downloaded their Excel sheet as well. However, what is missing in this is cause of death. What is provided is the extra deaths, excess deaths numbers are provided. But why did they happen? There is no categorization of that. So <clears throat> back here for a second. And if someone in CDC or FDA is listening and they're going to actually think of creating a categorization, we all know that when we are dying, unfortunately, we all die in a similar way. Cardiac failure, liver failure, renal failure, brain failure, so pulmonary failure. I think categorizing it that way would just be obfuscating or keeping it hidden. The right thing should be, why did the patient end up at the hospital? What was the situation for their COVID? Was the reason explainable or not that led them to the death? At the time of death, we uh, when we used to write uh, death certificates, uh, most of the time when somebody we would have in emergency room, I used to work in emergency room as part of my uh, beginning of the medical field uh, career, uh, many times people would arrive and they would die or they would be received dead. And so we will say, for example, if they came in and died, most of the time they'll die because their heart failed. Now, what was causing them to end up there? That was not there. So we'll say cardiac failure or cardiopulmonary failure and so on. So that's really not the correct reason. Okay, so continuing. This is also a very interesting chart. This is weekly estimated excess deaths by age group. So here, for example, 0 to 14, this little yellow line here, 0 to 14 years, December 8th to 14th, 2019, 18% extra. And so you can actually see them all here. This is, for example, April 19th to 25th, 2020, that is a week, and so on. And there is, for example, here, March 29th through April 4th, 2020, 53% excess deaths. So this is also a very interesting number. If you see, they have tagged it on top as well that this is flu season because the data is present for other years as well for comparison. And you would see that in 2020 times, these numbers have increased. Then here they're saying that if you're looking at this graph, the graph structure is this way. This zero line below is expected number of deaths for that year or that week or that month. Then the upper two lines, one is the area, red area. That is the expected number of deaths. And then the red line is the actual deaths that happen and that the difference between them. So with this, they have actually shown, this is a beautiful graph, weekly death rates, United States, excess deaths are in red, deaths officially attributed to COVID are in this light pink or light red color. And this is by state. So this is a great um, piece of a graph as well. So for example, if I go here to California, <laughs> Luffy's here. I'm so sorry. So if I'm here at California, and if you see this is, what is this? 5,396 actual deaths and 4,733 attributed to COVID. So that remaining four, about 700 deaths are excess deaths for which they are not given to COVID, so what caused it? So that question will continue to come up now. The important thing is data is now becoming more and more clear. Similarly, if you see here, weekly death rates, Western Europe. So if I take, for example, let's say uh, France. 
So if I go in here, 5.0 and 6.2. So 5.0 were the expected deaths, actual deaths were 6.2 or 5.1 and 6.1. So there are various numbers here to look at that as well. Weekly death rates, Northern Europe, so Estonia, Iceland, Sweden, Sweden, Jan's country. So you can see these numbers, 8.2 and 4.8. Then Central Europe, Eastern Europe, and so on. So the, the link is in the description. Please make sure that you can look at this. OK, so now if I go back here to excess mortality in our world in data, they have done something interesting, and that is if you see here, you can add various countries, and then you can look at the excess death per 100,000 in those countries. So for example, this is, I hope you can see it. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Good. So for example, excess mortality, deaths from all causes compared to projection based on the previous years. So if I go in here, and this is September 19, 2021, United States, 36% excess deaths, then expected. UK, 18% excess deaths, then expected. And please tell me if you would like me to add a country, I would add that and we'll look into that. Then here, according to age groups, so for example, this is... The country is, what country is this country? This is United States. So 0 to 14 years of age, this seems to be the highest time, these couple of ones. So this is United States, February 27, 2022, 0 to 14 years of age, 17% excess. Then 15 to 64%, look at the number of excess deaths in this, 15 to 64. There's a large age range but look september 12 63 percent excess deaths then here 65 to 74 if i go to more closer time january 30 46 percent excess deaths and so on then here excess mortality raw numbers of deaths from all causes compared to projections based on previous years now for the us I was reading how CDC was looking at the data. This is their data. And they write it down over here. They said that their standard formula in the US for calculating excess deaths is to compare the year to last four years and have that average compared. However, they said, as we progressed in the pandemic, we continue to exclude the weeks of the pandemic and the deaths during those weeks from calculating the expected numbers. And the reason is simple. And I think I, I uh, am with them on this one. What they're saying is that imagine normally every week, 100 people are expected to die because of the last year's data. In the COVID time, there were more people dying. And if you add them as well to the expected numbers for the future deaths, then those weeks when added will give a higher number of expected deaths in the future. So they simply decided that pandemic related times data will not be used to create expected deaths data. So now the problem became that let's say we are in 2022 and they want to use last four years, but they do not want to use 2022, 21, 20, and 19, or let's say 20, then the only data year that will be valid is 2019. But that is just one year to provide a reference, and that is not sufficient. <coughs> Excuse me. So what they did was they extended the the uh, previous years to use as a reference to six years. So with this, back here to the, 
So here, for example, the countries are, I do not know which countries are participating in this graph. Let me just change a country so I, I know. Let's call it United States. Okay, so hopefully this is United States data. So if I put the mouse cursor here, this is January 3, 2021. The projected 2021 number was 59,000, but 2020, sorry, projected 2020 was 59,000. And the actual was 87,000. So this is excess mortality, raw number of deaths from all cause compared to projected based on previous years. So this is how they are looking at this data here. And if you see here, what is interesting is there is 2015, 16, 18, 17, 18, 19, then year projection for 2020, then 21 as well. Then this is the economist number that we were just looking at. And our world in data says this work by the economist is one of the most comprehensive and rigorous attempt to understand how mortality has changed during the pandemic at the global level. But these estimates come with a great deal of uncertainty given the large amount of data that is missing, data that is missing, and the known shortcomings of the data that is available. So economists said we can think of them as our best educated but still bar ballpark estimates. So here now, this is estimated daily excess deaths during COVID from the economist world. And so once again, if I put, let's say, my cursor over here, this is May 23rd. I believe this was United States. So let's go here. It's so difficult to put it in the correct. So let's say here, May 17th. Upper bound of the expectation was 97. Lower bound was 27,000. 97,000, 719, and 27. Central excess death estimates 69,000. Confirmed deaths 12,000. What was the remaining number? So these are, for example, here. This is, once again, I thought this was US. So here is US. The This is the estimated cumulative excess deaths during COVID from the WHO United States. And this is the WHO number. So there are numbers by WHO. There are numbers by economist. Now for the US at least, let's look at how CDC looks at it. The problem with the CDC was they do not have cumulative numbers. So I actually did... Let me open my Excel sheet. I actually did uh, download the data and then looked at it. So one second. So here is the data from CDC. So if I filter it, and I say, let's just look at 2021. In this data, they have this column that says observed number of deaths. Then there is this column that says average expected deaths. And then there is this column that says excess. So for example, to read this, on this 1221 in Alabama, they were expected to have 1,134 deaths. However, they actually had 1,804 deaths. So there were 670 more, which was 60, about 59 point something percent more than expected. So if you keep this kind of a number in your mind, let me give you the totals for 2021. That is including all states. So expected was 1.79 million. So 1.8 million were expected. This is US 2021. The actual number was 
1.99 or about 20 so 19.9 so almost 20 million so there were excess deaths now what was the cause of that is still missing so going back to the cdc's they are showing some area so if you look at this graph this starts from 2018 goes to 2020 and then 21 and now 22 there are some parts of this graph where you see these uh, structures above these lines the lines are the expected deaths and then the projections above are the projection and actual so if you see the positive sign that is indicates observed count above threshold so for example here this is april 11 2020 average expected number of deaths were 58000 predicted deaths were 79000 upper bound of threshold was 60 percent excess deaths were 36 percent and you see that there is continuity of these what is interesting here is if you go to the top here you can actually see those excess by various parameters for example you can say weekly excess excess deaths within and with or without waiting so they they are creating weights to see the projections number of excess deaths absolute deaths percent excess deaths weekly number of deaths by age weekly number of deaths by race and ethnicity and deaths by race and ethnicity so for example if i go here for the age so now here, this is the so for example, United States week ending 9th, January 9, average expected number of deaths 61,000, predicted weighted number of deaths 87,000, upper bound was 63,000, percent excess was 42.3%. Now you could go to this second part as well where they have given cumulative numbers to. So this is the data or the first view on the data. I think I'm going to continue to dig a little more in it. I want to see what is in the chat, if there is any. So Megamuzi says it's endemic. I would believe it is in the end. Look, from an epidemiological definition, pandemic is supposed to be an infection that can continue to travel the borders. If we look at that definition, then it is still a pandemic. But if you see that it is now settling within the societies, then it is an endemic. Romnick says, and Romnick is a doctor, the excess number of deaths from COVID seem to be as much as from all other causes to get all together, like CBS, CNS. Cause. Correct. So I think the deaths number that we are seeing are all cause mortality. But that all cause mortality is much higher than all cause mortality based on previous year's averages. So what is happening is there is an expected number. So let's say this week, there is an expectation of, let's say, 10,000 deaths. And that is based on all-cause mortality based on previous years. And then we say, you know what, because of COVID, there will be another 129 expected deaths per 100,000 people. So, <coughs> excuse me. So let's say instead of 10,000, X number, let's say 12,000. But the actual number comes back to be 20,000. So now the question becomes those extra 8,000 deaths. They do not fit in all-cause mortality expectation based on previous years. They also do not fit on only the COVID deaths because, let's say, COVID reported additional deaths at 2,000. So what are those 8,000? Where are these coming from? That is the... You saw various websites and healthcare authorities making conjectures. I do not think that anyone has actually done the correct data processing. And this can only be done, done by the healthcare authorities. For example, me here, or economist, or our world in data cannot go and read people's death certificates to see what is the reason they died. 
only healthcare authorities may have access or hospitals may have access. So it is really their job to come back and provide the correct view. Now, I suspect that they will not. Absolutely. So, Paul, this was one of the possibility that excess death is occurring because, let's say, if I have cardiac problem and I am so afraid of going to hospital so that I don't get COVID and I'm staying back home, I'm not following up, I'm not going to the doctor, I'm not getting workups done, or people not getting surgeries done or the cancer treatments done, and they continue to degrade faster and then end up dying. And if this was a regular non-COVID year, they would have gone to the hospital, followed up, got their surgery, got their chemo, got, got their medicines, and kept living. This is one possibility, not all the possibilities. So Bob says, more suicide, more overdose, more cancer deaths, more accidents, more... Absolutely. Suicide rates. And I feel that this is the duty of healthcare authorities for those countries where the data is present and the infrastructure is present to, estim to process the data. For a country with less resources, asking them to do all this processing, they will not be able to. But countries like US have the data electronically. They can do this processing. And I think that one reason that there are so many conspiracy theories everywhere is because the healthcare authorities are not correctly making the data transparent. And it's not that they're hiding it. I think they're just not processing it. Robin says, can we see data from Italy? Let's do that. Let's go to Excuse me. Excess mortality, death from all cause compared to projections based on the previous years. So here, for example, if I go to Feb, January 30, 2022, 15% excess, then there is minus 1%. It is also possible that because of the pandemic and lockdowns and people being stopped from moving out or going around, they're sitting at home and the number of deaths are actually reduced compared to excess death. This is also possible that the number of deaths are reduced because the authorities are not reporting them in time. So it can be in minus, but that is not necessarily an indication, correct indication of the death numbers. So then if you see here, April 10, 10%. So Italy seems to be in 8 to 10% average excess mortality. They had big jumps. For example, November 22, 2020, 55%. Then here, March 29, 2020, 86%. So Eugene is saying, good question, Joanne Gill. Your highly paid public health officers are not doing it, so we have to take care of our personal health ourselves. We do have to. Unfortunately, the authorities are just lost. Um, let's see. KP says England having excess deaths. Let's look at the man. Luffy just came in for a few minutes. Okay, so this is UK. UK's one huge spike was April 19, 2020, 107%. Then smaller spike, January 10, 2021, 
then they actually even have some numbers in negative. Then October 3, 2021, 13%. Nowadays, this is Omicron time, 24% on May 15, uh, July 20%. So they have actually, their excess death has increased a little bit. I wonder how the average would look like. I suspect somewhere about 10%, 8 to 10%. Previously, it was a little higher with Delta and this seems to be beta and this seems to be original so i have a question for the audience what have you heard so i'm sure that you are watching videos and you're reading as well and you're looking at those who are on this uh, sub stack as well what is your observation what can you add to this information So we can we can request Paul. Paul uh, said to me today that he'll be absent for a week or more. Uh, so when he come back, we'll we'll ask him. Anand says, Doctor Bean, why does Bulgaria, the least jabbed country? have no excess death issue, but the jab countries with the most jabbed have the most success. Bulgaria literally is only 25% jab. I do not know if it is related to the jabbing, but let's see. Bulgaria. So here, if we go to Bulgaria, let's say, this is what November 29, 2020, 128% percent excess. Then April 4, 91% excess. Then November 7, 2021, 102% excess deaths. Nowadays, their excess deaths are really low, actually negative. So yes, they had the excess deaths up till um, April of 2022. And then now they have gone below even the expected deaths. So what is the reason? I do not know. I don't think it is just as simple as saying vaccines. It has to be more than that. Okay, let's see. Paul says what? Paul says, my early impressions were that the U.S. administration was deliberately suppressing data for political reasons, the CDC. I, so there may be that it is political and I'm just too naive for this. I just think they are too lazy to do these things. They do not care enough to do these things. Kelly says, can isolation away from other people for an extended time reduce immunity? Yes, not really reduce immunity, but reduce the learning of our immunity. So these little outbreaks that you are seeing, I think that is because our immune systems are becoming not exposed to the pathogens as they are regularly able to. And so that is how we are seeing the outbreaks. And this is especially more hurt, hurtful in the children. But I think this is happening. And this, these little pockets of outbreaks would continue to happen until we start mixing and matching once more and become known to the newer pathogens and our immune system comes back up in more learned mode. So it's not the immunity's reduction. For example, there's a thing called clean... Um, hygiene theory, actually, hygiene theory, not clean theory, hygiene theory. Hygiene theory is that those nations which have clean environments, they have more allergies and are able to fight bacteria less. Allergies are more because their immune system has nothing to do. So the cells just keep attacking whatever they find and they find our own cells and they attack them. 
and the ability to handle infections well or less ability is because the immune system is not exposed to them. So it's not really a weak immune system, it's just less learned immune system. <laughs> CX tube says never attribute to malice that is which is adequately explained by stupidity. So I I have this kind of a thinking that they just they don't care. The bureaucracy that I see during the FDA briefing or debrief meetings where they have no idea what they're doing. And it is everything done by the big pharma that has made the document for them presented the document to them, prepared the documents and them so that they can ask the questions. And for me, it was really horrible. Remember when they said Pfizer, that Pfizer should give the data, uh, Pfizer or CDC and FDA should provide that data for the vaccine trials, and this had 75 years, one of the statement in there from FDA or CDC, whoever was that authority was, they don't have the data. They said that the trial data is with FDA, with Pfizer. So Pfizer, when they have to give us the data so we can then furnish it to for the freedom of information request, Pfizer has to scrub the data and they have to look at any um, commercial interests in their data, etc. And I was baffled that they were not even able to say to Pfizer or Moderna or others to say, when you have done your trials, we need you to move all your data to us in this secure server. Because that data now belongs to us because it is this country's property. But no, it was Pfizer's ownership. So Pfizer looked at the data. Pfizer created the reports. Pfizer gave it to them. And then Pfizer came for the FDA debrief. This just looked like a clown show to me. And that showed me such an incompetence. It was laziness. Isabel says, I'm a therapist and I can confirm the amount of mental health needs has increased since the lockdown. A lot. Don't you see the kind of uh, people are on edge. They, they fight more easily. They curl. They become upset more easily. They have, uh, someone was saying, a friend of mine, they said, generally people have become, and that includes all of us, people have become a little more mean. So if somebody was good, they have become a little upset. Somebody who was already upset or mean, they have become even more. So the society has tilted towards anger and anxiety. And I can understand financial issues, social issues, future, the wastage of time. And then humans, we all, do not like to be bound. So when we are asked to be bound and then we are mandated to be certain ways, that really agitates a human being. It's very taxing on a psychological level. <laughs> Ramnik says, we had to find special place with dirt as everyone in house and yard was, yes. <laughs> Colombian says getting here late. So today's live stream has gone on for some time, which will then mean that um, less people would view it. Interestingly, I thought yesterday's topic was amazing. But you know that yesterday's viewership was um, lesser than even one third. Not may Maybe my title, somebody has to join my team to help me figure out clickbaity titles. <laughs> John says, what does Dr. Fauci have to say about excess deaths? I believe everything he says is accurate uh, because it's science. So he'll probably say that if they were all vaccinated, there will be less. Uh, I know I 
I am. I hope you. I'm being sarcastic because the answer from there is always just that. James Nguyen says, <laughs> "Clickbait title: Fauci declares pandemic over." <laughs> yes, you. The, we have to give a clickbait title, not a YouTube bait title that comes and shuts down the account. Kini says it was a great discussion. Thank you. Yes, remember, Paul, when Dr. Fauci actually say, said that I am science, I think he wanted to say I represent science or something. He said, I'm science, and then those who are opposing me are not looking at the science. But really, if you pick up the messages from Fauci and company and everyone to say, if you get vaccine, you will not have infection. If you get vaccine, you will not spread infection. Um, there are so many such mistakes that proved right in front of us within a couple of years to be wrong. I still remember, I used to say, this is impossible for us to not be exposed to the virus. It's a respiratory virus. How is the vaccine going to stop it? So there was such just, that seemed manipulative to me. Atile Andino says, Dr. Bean, can you also link it TLR4? What are what are, can we do to reduce, eliminate that inflammation process in protecting our hearts and the spike protein? So, <coughs> so first, I believe we need to understand if there are spike proteins for an individual person. So maybe anti-ACE2 antibodies are interesting. Uh, there are some tests for spike proteins. Then the best way, in my opinion, this is not an advice. In my opinion, the best way is to look at autophagy and others to see, can we help remove that garbage? Kelly says, my nephew's speech therapist is reporting an increase in speech disorders in young kids these days. Can you imagine this, that when I was, so I speak every day, right? When I started going out after this, the mask mandates and the these lockdown mandates were finished, I had actually forgotten how to do small talks and how to interact, how to look at people in their eyes. I had actually forgotten for myself, and I said, oh man, I need to retrain myself. <laughs> yes, I need to figure out, a, look at the viewership for the yesterday's videos, five or 6,000 views only so far. So I, I think that this has to be a clickbaity title, but I do not know what that will be. Okay, so Andrew Tio says, are you feeling better? Yes. So as you can tell, so now that you bring it up, remember at one point in the this uh, episode before this one, I had palpitations and shortness of breath. So some cool bean made a comment to say, you should get your heart worked up. Maybe there's a problem with your heart. So I thought, sure, I'm in an age where I should get this anyway. So I went to my doctor and I said, here are the symptoms. Do you think we should work up our heart? And he said, yes. So right then they had done some, you know, right there, EKGs and other tests, they did troponin and, um, and so heart was fine. This morning, they had also kept exercise tolerance test. And they did the exercise tolerance test today. It was fine. They actually said, my heart performed. They gave me the data as well. My heart performed better than the average performance at this age. So I saw that actually they were expecting at one point my heart beats to be at most 161 under a specific pressure. And it was 172. So it was good. So, so far... Uh, although I did not have the shortness of breath or palpitations again, but heart workup because one of the cool beans suggested I got that done. <laughs> so, uh, sexy bacteria. Yeah, I should probably call it sexy bacteria. <laughs> Halari says, thank you.
So with this, let's stop for today. My request to you, please like, subscribe and share. Um, there are links in the description. One is for Dr. Bean, one-time payment, no recurrence, and a great set of lectures. And then you can use PayPal, you can buy me a coffee, you can become a member of Substack. It's like $5 a month. You can become a member of Substack or Patreon. So with that, thank you very much. Please tell me what did you think or what have you heard? I'm actually interested because I just started looking into this. So tell me what you think. And secondly, what topic would you like to do next? And I would see you tomorrow.